Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Let me give you an extreme example, and this really sort of drives the point home sometimes, is that if you evaluate the merits of a trade based on the maximum gain to the maximum loss, the extreme example is it's just simply a lottery ticket, right? The maximum loss on a lottery ticket is a dollar. The maximum gain on a lottery ticket is a $10 million or $100 million, right? If, if that made it a good trade, then you should invest everything you have in lottery tickets. It's obviously not a good trade, right? Because even though the max loss to max gain ratio is, is en enormous, the probability of profit relative to the probability of loss is, is minuscule, right? I mean, you, you're only going to lose a dollar, but you're going to lose a dollar almost every single time, right? What we're talking about here is being the lottery commission, not being the guy buying the lottery ticket, right? You want to be, you want to have the odds of profit in your favor. Don't worry as much about how much you make. Make sure that your trades are such that they make a profit at all. So this one has a three times greater chance, a three times greater profit than it does loss. And what that means is that the odds of losing are three times greater than the odds of making because it needs a substantial movement in the index in order to make money. Now, granted, if you really believe that index is that bullish and has the potential to go higher, then you definitely would rather do the blue trade than the beige trade because the blue trade pays off a lot better. It pays off $150 for every $50 at risk, whereas the other one only pays off $97 for every $103 at risk. So it's not nearly as profitable. You'd make a profit, but you always want to make the biggest profit. So adjust your strike prices based on your level of bullishness so that you can capitalize as much as you can. All right, let's look at the next example. Let's talk about some bearish spreads. Let's say that I'm bearish, and in this particular chart, I am, and here's why. This particular index fell through support in early September and has not been able to get through, really, except for just a tiny little bit there in mid-December, and it couldn't hold it. So in my opinion, I'm hitting upside resistance. Odds are pretty good based on what I've seen for the last four or five months that it's going to head lower from here. Well, it did that right at, on October 1st. It hit that level of resistance, and it came down. It didn't quite get there in early November, but it got there in mid-December, and it came lower. Now it's coming up there again for the third or fourth time. I'm figuring the odds are pretty good it's going to go lower. Remember, when you're bearish, you want to you want to Establish your bearish position in a long-term bearish trend, but when you're at a short-term period of strength. And when you come right up to your resistance line, that's your short-term period of strength. You've just come right up to, to where the resistance is. That's your strength. You've had strength for the last four or five days as this index rose up, but when it hits that, that resistance line, that's the, the ideal time to go short because then you're going to head lower. Just like on the bullish side, you establish your bullish positions not when you're way above your support line, but when you're at your support line, right? You're in a long-term bullish trend, but you want to grab your positions or establish them when it comes down to that support level because that's the point where you can put on your bullish spread at the cheaper price, right? So in this example, we're in momentary or short-term strength in a bearish or in a trend that appears like it's going to go bearish. So how can I take advantage of this? Well, I've got two ways. I can... Well, I've got several, but in my example here, I've got two choices. And it depends on how bearish am I, right? Now, if I think this is probably just going to come down a little bit and hold its ground like it did in December, like it did in mid to late September and right at the beginning of October, then I want to put on a spread where I can make a profit if it gets down into that beige area. That would be the aggressive trade on the right or the moderate lead trade. But if I'm, if I'm a little worried about this and I'm going, you know, I don't think this thing has a lot of upside, but it, what if it does what it did in December? What if it breaks through this support line, this resistance line just a little bit? And in fact, I don't know by dates, but I would guess that that last or second to last candle in December, where it was right above that red zone, is probably right around, or above that red line, is right around December option expiration. Because you remember, option expiration happens about three quarters of the way through the month, which just happens to be about right about where those candles were. Now, right at this point, 
you know, maybe I'm going to get to that zone by February. I don't know. But if I'm a little worried that that might happen, I might want to put on a real conservative trade. The conservative trade would be the in-the-money debit put spread here. I'm going to buy February 108 puts, and I'm going to sell February 105 puts. This is a debit spread. As a debit spread, I want both options to be in the money at expiration. For both of these options to be in the money, that means that the index would have to be below the lowest strike price because these are puts, and that's where it's at right now. 108 is way in the money. 105 is in the money by a little bit. The index is at 104.42. Now, we know what the bottom of that red zone is, right, or the orange zone, right? It's our break-even line. How do we calculate the break-even? It's the main position minus the debit. The main position is the expensive leg, which is 108. Subtract the debit of 244, and I get a break-even of 105.56. In order for me to make money, I have to be below 105.56, which is the top of that orange bar. In order for me to make my max profit, I want to be below that entire orange bar, which is from a top of 105.56 down to a bottom of 105, which is my lowest strike. So I'm already well into my max profit zone. So even though I'm bearish, I don't really need a downside movement. I just need to make sure this thing doesn't go up. If it goes up and it gets into that orange bar, I'm going to start, I'm going to start having my profit deplete. And if I get to the top of that orange bar and break out of it, then I start losing money. And we don't want that because we're bearish. So, but this is a very slightly bearish or neutral or a very conservative trade because I need both options in the money and they're both already in the money. If I want to be a little more aggressive and try to make a little more profit, because again, look at that. The maximum gain on that trade is $560. I got $2,440 at risk. Again, that's a big imbalance, right? That's almost a 5 to 1 ratio, but that means I got about a 5 to 1 ratio of making a profit relative to making a loss. It's pretty easy to see that the odds of this index staying below that orange zone where it has been for the last five months are pretty high. That's why the payoff is so low. That's why it's only a $560 payoff because the odds of it occurring are very good. But if I wanted to try to make more than 560 because I've got a much more bearish sentiment, I could do that as well by putting on the at-the-money spread, which would be considered moderately bullish. It's at-the-money because one leg is in the money, one leg is out of the money, right? I'm buying the 106s, which are already in the money by about a buck and a half. I'm selling the 103s, which are already out of the money by about a buck and a half. So the index is right between the strikes at the beginning. What's my goal? It's a debit spread. I want both options to be in the money at expiration. How low does it need to go for that to happen? It has to go below the lowest strike price, which is 103. That's the bottom edge of that big beige zone. That's ideally where I want to be. I want to be at that bottom or below. That's where I hit my maximum profit, in this case, of, uh, of $1,250. And that's calculated again. This is a three-point spread. I paid $1.75. That means I got $1.25 left for my max gain. This one, you can see the other one had about a 5-to-1 ratio of max gain to max loss. This one's a lot closer to 1-to-1. One one. I mean, there's still a little, there's a little larger max loss than max gain, which means the odds of making a profit are still a little bit in my favor, but not nearly as much as they were on the previous trade. This is a more aggressive trade. Where do I have to get at to make, to make any money at all? I've got to get below the top of that beige zone, which is 104.25. Well, right now it's at 104.42. So whereas in the previous trade, or on the previous spread, the index goes nowhere, I hit max profit. In this example, the index has to go down to at least 104 and a quarter. It's at 104.42 now in order for me to start making money. And then I make money all the way through the, the, the beige zone and my profit caps out at the bottom of that beige zone. So you can see how this trade is more aggressive. But if that's your belief that we're going to get back down into that area where we were, again, in September or October or November or December, if we're going to break back down all the way to those levels, then you'd want to try to capitalize on that and get a bigger profit. So you do a little bit more aggressive trade. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.